Here are the words of wisdom by Tim Peters, known as the Zen of Python. All that is said here is true and wise. But you must know two important things. First, these wise words are not specific to Python language. You can apply them irrespective of the language of your choice. Second, because these words of wisdom are titled the Zen of Python, it gives you an impression that Python language somehow enables all these principles. Ironically, nothing could be further from this impression. Python language, which by the way is my primary language for now a few years, is one of the most terrible language I have used in my professional life. That said, while I'm a programming language enthusiast and lover, I do acknowledge that more important than a programming language is the community and the solid libraries and frameworks available in a given domain. And this is why machine learning or data science is dominated by Python language. Maybe I'll express my strong opinions on this matter in a different setup or a different tutorial. But for now, I want to only pick two recommendations by Tim Peters. The first is that explicit is better than implicit. And the second is that readability is very important. Both of, you, both of these would enable you to write maintainable and potentially bug-free code. That said, here is the first example. A screenshot from one of the object detection repository on GitHub. The author here is trying to transpose and reshape the tensors. Can you understand it? The author has at least put some comments on there that how the, the, the tensors are being rearranged or transformed. But really, you can't understand it. I cannot understand it. And it is read unreadable and not maintainable, disrespecting the so-called the Zen of Python. The second snippet comes from a repo in which the author wants to provide a nice API for object detection. But unfortunately, in there also, you can see the usage of uh, reshape and permute. And more importantly, note the usage of minus one in there at different uh, location in the two reshapes that he is using. The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce you to a fantastic library that can not only make this reshaping or permuting operations readable, but also explicit. And it also unifies these operations under a single API. This unification is not only with respect to various operations, but it is also across various tensor frameworks, that is NumPy, TensorFlow, PyTorch, etc. So let's learn this library using various examples. The first example has a five dimensional tensor of shape 1, 3, 85, 13 and 13. You would find this type of a tensor in the object detection related networks. And I would like this to be reshaped as 1, 3, 13, 13 and 85. Let's first use a permute API in which I have specified the current dimension and their rearrangement. Essentially, the current second dimension is moved to the last place and the current last two places are moved before it. Here is how you would do it using inops rearrange API. The first argument is your tensor that you want to be reshaped or rearranged. And the second argument is called the pattern. Here I have named various dimensions in the pattern as I saw fit. B is for batch, makes sense. Num underscore anchors is the number of anchors. I could have used the letter A as well. P is for the number of predictions, H is for height, and W is for width. There is an arrow in the pattern, and on the right side is the new arrangement, the resulting arrangement. No messing with the dimension index, etc. And even more important, the information about what you are reshaping and to what you are reshaping is at the same place. We can call it explicit and readable. Let's look at another example. The tensor we are going to reshape is still the same as before. However, we would like to not only rearrange, but merge some dimensions at the same time. We'll be transforming the five dimensional tensor to a three dimensional one this time, such that the second dimension of the new tensor cons will consist of second dimension of the current tensor and the last two dimensions of the current tensor combined, or we can say merged. Here is how you would do it. Note that on the right side of our pattern, first I have moved the H and W next to num anchors. 
and then I have put the brackets around the three of, of them. This bracket is telling INOPS to merge them or compose them. Basically, both composition and rearrangement in one shot. So this is fine, but what if, if we want to do the reverse of this example? That is, we would like to decompose the axes into multiple axes instead of merging or composing them. That's called decomposition. The trick here is that in that case, since our starting tensor would be a three-dimensional tensor, we need to explicitly provide the information about the size of the new dimension being inserted. Let's look at that example as well. Here I am doing the reverse of what I did earlier, that is going from three-dimensional tensor to a five-dimensional one. Let me create a fake tensor here. And here is how you would do it. The first two arguments are the tensors to be shaped and the pattern we want to use. But now look, I have few more arguments that are going to be used as an information on the size of various dimensions. Here I have specified num anchors to be three, h to be 13 and w to be 13. Actually, I could have been done without specifying w. I, I just needed to specify either h or w because inops can infer the last unknown variable or spec. Just a simple mathematics here, arithmetic here. But, 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 but j j just hold on. My, my recommendation is going to be to be explicit. That is, if I were you, I would prefer the first version in which I specified the W. Let's try to apply our knowledge on not so good example from the open source repository. Here the author is doing two operations, permute and view. Let me first write them in my notebook so as to reproduce it. And here is how you would do it using inops. First and foremost, there are no two operations. You could always do it in two steps if you want, but it's not going to give you any extra readability benefit as such. Second, note that in this pattern, I have the brackets both on the left and the right side of the pattern. Otherwise, it should make intuitive sense to you what is happening. Let's look at the second ugly example. Here the author is generating a list using the a arrange API of torch, uh, which will create a tensor of size 13. And then he is reshaping it to a four dimensional tensor. I've written the code to show the shapes at various stages. We can say that before reshaping, it is a one dimensional tensor of size 13. Let's look at how it is reshaped. The place where you have minus one is the place where the original data will be inserted. The rest would just do nesting. With inops, we'll be super explicit and we'll put one where we want the dimension to be created. By the way, there is an API in Torch called unsqueeze to insert the dimensions. You would need to specify where you want to insert the dimension and you can only insert one dimension at a time. This is a reason perhaps the original author used the reshape instead of unsqueeze. Anyway, this unsqueeze API of PyTorch and NumPy is as ugly as the reshape with minus one in it. So, we unsqueezed, which means that we inserted an extra dimension, but we can also squeeze, meaning that we can remove the extra dimension of size one. Let's do it on this example. Uh, first, I'm using torch squeeze. As you can see, it removed the dimension of size one from my original tensor, all of them, by the way. And and I could be more specific to say that please remove only the first dimension by providing an argument of zero. With inops, we just need to write the pattern and we can remove as many dimensions we want to remove. This is so good, right? Permute, view, reshape, squeeze, unsqueeze, all now done using one API and using the readable patterns with less number of lines. I love inops. Now, so far, I have shown the examples using PyTorch, but the API is exactly the same whether you are using TensorFlow or JAX or NumPy, and you know we all mix these uh, frameworks quite often. It is true that as part of neural network, we do have reshaping layers. If you know how to write a custom layer or a custom module, then you could just wrap the rearrange operator or API of inops. But this great library already provides you a reusable rearrange module for PyTorch or rearrange layer for Keras. 
Let's look at the example for that as well. I have imported the rearranged layer or module. Here is how I am defining my custom PyTorch module or a neural network. It has only one layer for now that would generate the predictions using the output channels that are computed using the little arithmetic operation that I have in there to compute it. Doesn't matter for our example. And I would like to reshape the output to what I desire. So I would add the rearrange layer to this custom module like this. The API is almost exactly the same when we are manipulating the tensor. But in this case, the first argument starts with the pattern as the tensor that we will convert will be the input during the forward operation. Like this. First you have X going into the con, the output is getting stored in the X variable and then it is going to the rearrange. And finally, here is a code snippet building the neural network object and passing a fake tensor input to it. The resulting shape is what I desire. That is, it follows the pattern that I specified in the rearrange layer. Now I have only touched the surface of INOPS as it provides APIs to do few more things. For example, you can use it to do reduction and repeat within a tensor and few more operations as well. The documentation is great and there are plenty of examples as part of this repository. As such, the documentation is so good that I didn't want to even make a video tutorial, but then I thought that most difficult aspect nowadays is to be aware of the existence of a library or a framework. And hence I have made this video. With that, I end this tutorial. Hope you learned something new and useful today. My only, my only request is to please stop using reshape, permute, view, squeeze, unsqueed nonsense, and instead use rearrange from INOPS. Goodbye for now and see you in another tutorial. Bye-bye.